Welcome to Ella Law Tutorials. Please like, share, and subscribe. So, we said in Chapter 1 that the four cardinal prerequisites of criminal liability are 1. An act, 2. Compliance with the definitional elements, 3. Unlawfulness, and 4. Culpability. In this video, we will go through the first of these prerequisites as well as other associated subjects. The technical term actus reus is frequently used in legal literature to refer to the need of an act that coincides with the definition of the proscription. Once it is clear that the type of crime for which X is charged is recognized in our law, that is, once the principle of legality has been met, the first requirement for determining criminal liability is that there must be some conduct on the part of X. We define conduct as an act or omission. Act is sometimes referred to as positive conduct or commission, and omission is sometimes referred to as negative conduct or failure to act. A person is not punished for merely considering doing something or even for choosing to do it. X must have begun turning his thoughts into deeds before there can be any discussion of criminal liability. This does not imply that only crimes that have already caused harm are penalized. As will be seen, attempting to commit a crime is also punished, but even in that case, there must be some action taken that goes beyond just having an idea or making a decision to act. As evidenced by the fact that incitement and conspiracy are crimes, even verbal expression may be sufficient to establish a crime. The act must be a human act, which means that the perpetrator must be a human being. Animals and even inanimate objects, such as beams that fell on people's heads, were sometimes tried and punished in ancient cultures and during the Middle Ages, but this cannot happen today in South African or any other modern legal system. For an example of animal punishment, see Exodus chapter 21, verse 28 in the Bible. However, a human can be penalized if he commits a crime through the agency of an animal, such as when he commands his dog to bite someone, Eustace 1948, 3, Essay 859, T, Fernandez 1966, 2, Essay 259, A. First of all, the act or conduct must be voluntary. If conduct cannot be controlled by the will, it is involuntary, such as when. Only if an act or omission is voluntary is it punished. A sleepwalker tramples on someone, or an epileptic swings his hand and smacks someone in the face while making an epileptic fist. If X's behavior is involuntary denotes that X is not the author of the act or omission, it was unintentional. Then it was not X who performed the act, but something that happened to X. The concepts of a voluntary act and a willed act should not be confounded. The question of whether there was an act in the criminal law sense is simply whether the act was voluntary. It does not have to be a willed act as well. Conduct that is not willed, such as acts committed negligently, 